Thank you. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, data cleansing with Pandas. Data cleansing, I think, is um, not everyone's favorite task. Um, it can be very manual. Um, it can be very uh, time consuming and even somewhat tedious. But uh, the tools in Pandas um, give you a really powerful framework for cleaning data. And I think once you learn those tools and accelerate your uh, data cleansing productivity, uh, you might start to have a little fun. So um, I'm going to run through uh, some of the fundamentals of um, working with um, data in Pandas. Um, and uh, we'll see how those can um, help you be more effective. The first thing I'm going to talk about is just the data frame object um, and how you go about navigating that um, in Pandas. Then we'll talk about slicing, uh, splitting, and joining uh, data frames. After that, we'll get into the different ways that you can do text transformations um, with Pandas. And we'll talk a little bit about um, missing values and how you can um, fill in missing values and uh, deal with those uh, in various ways. Then we'll be looking at merging data frames uh, when you want to join two different tables together, um, some of the options um, that you have there, and techniques for um, bringing data together. And then finally, we'll look at uh, grouping by values in a data frame um, and working with uh, duplicates. So um, getting started here with the basics, um, there are a number of different ways that uh, Pandas allows you to get data into um, a data frame, which is the, the fundamental object. Um, there is a, uh, 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 from CSV method, which you can use to bring in a flat file, which might be a, a common way um, that you get data into Pandas. So I have created some fake data here and put it into um, this variable uh, df. And you can see um, in our very first item here, um, we've used the head method, which is just gonna show us the first five rows of the data frame. And you'll see throughout um, the examples here, I've, used, I've just tacked on the head method um, just to make things a little bit easier to see. So that's just gonna just show us the first five rows. But a couple things to point out um, about the data frame. Um, you can see that across the top, we have in bold our column names. So that is um, our column index are those values. And then you can see down the left-hand side, we have a row index, which is, um, we see zero through four here uh, at the top of our data frame. Um, so with those two indexers, that gives us a ton of power um, to slice the data frame and to look at things in different ways. And you can see that um, the index and the columns are both attributes on the, um, on the data frame object. So you can see there's a range index, uh, which is our indexer for the rows, and there's a columns index, uh, which is those values um, in the index object. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to point out here is you'll see we have our last order date column. Um, we have date values in there. We also have NAN, and what that indicates is um, the null value object um, in Pandas, which is, um, going to give us a lot of power for dealing with null values. So that'll come up later, but I just want to note that. That's represented, NAN there, that's the representation of a, a null value. Um, at the bottom here, you see we have sliced our data frame um, two ways. So using the um, LOC method, the loc method, um, we've sliced first by rows and then by columns. So we have uh, rows 10 through 15, and then we've just taken the city and classification columns. So that's kind of the basics of um, what's going on with the data frame object. Um, so now we'll talk a little bit more about um, slicing, splitting, um, and joining. Um, one thing to know about Pandas is the data frame object is the, a two-dimensional um, indexed uh, table. The other key object we have in Pandas is a series object, uh, which is just an indexed array. So anytime I want to look at um, a column of my data frame as a series, I can simply um, put the, um, the column name um, in brackets after um, the data frame name. So here you can see the classification values um, are there, the first four values um, indexed. One of the um, 
really useful methods that we have on um, the series object is uh, value counts. So you can see I've, I've taken the value counts of my classification um, and this is gonna give me all the unique values and the number of occurrences. So we can see that uh, the B value occurs 509 times. Another really useful um, method on a series is uh, unique. So this is gonna give us back an array with all the unique values. In this example, we're looking at all the states, all the different states that are here um, in, this, uh, in this data frame. Um, so a key concept when we're indexing data in Pandas is the idea of uh, a Boolean mask or a, a Boolean series. So um, there's a number of different ways that we can generate a series of Boolean values and then we can use those um, as a mask or an indexer um, on our data frame. So you can see down here, I've set the variable class B mask equal to um, the statement where I've simply um, taken a panda series and um, uh, compared it to another value here, just a string B. So that value, um, that variable then, as you can see below, um, is just a, an array of true or false values. So when that becomes very powerful is we use it um, to index our rows in our data frame. So here I have um, the data frame uh, sliced by uh, the class B mask. And so you can see in the top, only rows where the classification is B um, are, are shown in, in this data frame. And then we can use um, the invert operator um, on our series as well. So you can see down here by adding in um, the invert operator below, um, we're gonna get only those values where classification is not B. So those are the fundamentals of um, defining masks and, um, and splitting, uh, slicing data frames um, against them. There are a number of really powerful methods to create um, these Boolean series. Um, the first one uh, we'll talk about is, uh, is null. So as I mentioned um, at the very beginning, there is um, the np.nan object that Pandas uses to, um, uh, to define missing values. So with is null, we can find out where those missing values are. Um, and we can see here, um, we're putting value counts, we're chaining value counts onto our series so we can see how many are true and how many are false. So looking at this, we know that 344 of our uh, values in the last order date column um, are null. There's also a not null function, so you can see that's just um, the inverse there. Uh, Pandas also has a really powerful set of methods um, uh, on the series uh, related to strings. So um, you can see here we have string.contains, um, and that will take a, a regular expression, so um, it's very powerful. Here I've just um, put in a simple word, but what this is giving us is um, we can see that there are 54 uh, cases in the account name column um, that contain the word group. Um, another uh, method on a series for um, defining a mask that's really useful um, is, is, is in. So here you can see um, we have this taken the state column um, and then we've used the is in method and provided a list of states, New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey. Um, and there we can see that we have 46 rows that have that state value. Um, and finally, we can, um, we can combine um, these uh, Boolean series with different logic. So below I've said, um, we'll look at the account name that contains group and the last order date is not null. So we can see there are only 32 values where uh, both of those, um, both of those things are true. And um, finally, on the splitting uh, topic, I, uh, a really valuable uh, pattern for for cleaning data is to um, to split on some mask um, and create um, two separate data frames and then you can apply different treatments to those and then bring them back together. So this is a very simple example. Um, we've created a data frame called Tri-State DF, which is anywhere that um, we have New York, Connecticut, or New Jersey as our state. 
Uh, and then we have outside tri-state. So we've applied the invert operator there um, to the same mask. That gives us everything outside of those three values. Um, and then uh, what I've done is just a simple example here. We created a new column called weighted customer value. Um, and we, for local customers, maybe we want that to be a little higher. So we multiplied um, by a higher multiplier um, versus outside the tri-state area. And then you can see um, down below, um, we've sorted the values. There's a, the sort values method. Um, we can specify the column we want to sort on. So I've sorted by a weighted customer value um, with the highest at the top. And we can see that the multiplier is applied um, the higher multiplier is applied for um, Connecticut and uh, New Jersey here. So we're going to move on now to looking at how we actually transform text. Um, there are uh, a number of transformations in um, the series dot uh, string methods. Um, and uh, just as one example, a very simple example, we can do uh, string dot upper, and that's going to capitalize our name. So we can see we've got um, our account names capitalized there. There's also string dot replace. Again, this takes a regular expression. I've just done a very um, simple replace here and just replaced a dash with a space. And you can see um, Medina McCullough is now has a space instead of a dash. So the string methods are, are very powerful. Um, but a lot of times we want to define our own function um, that does something a little different. So um, with that, we can use the apply method on a series um, and apply the function to all those values. So I created this very simple function, customer code, that basically just breaks um, a string into words and then takes the first letter of each word and capitalizes it and sticks them back together. So you can see we've created down here customer code AG and that corresponds to Arnold Group. Um, a lot of times we'll want to do something a little bit uh, more complicated and um, create a transformation that's based on multiple columns and not just on a series. So um, data frame also has uh, an apply method and we can define a function that operates on a row. So this is basically the same function except instead of taking a string value, it now takes a row of pandas data and we can reference um, the values in specific columns um, right here in the function. So now we say row uh, sub account name uh, dot split up here and then below we add in uh, the uh, a dash and row sub state um, and tack it on the end. So now you can see our new customer code. We've got uh, the same code, but now I've got the state value from a different column um, also included. So it's a very simple example, but it's a powerful um, construct that, that can be used to um, do uh, all kinds of data transformations. Um, and I'll just note, when you apply, uh, when you use the apply method on a data frame, by default, it's going to apply um, column-wise. So that's why you can see um, uh, the um, axis equal one um, argument added there. So what that tells of the apply method is apply row-wise rather than uh, column-wise. Another uh, method for doing transformations that's very useful in data cleansing is um, creating a map and then mapping values over. So I defined a very simple dictionary here um, that just has breaking um, six states into different regions. And then we can um, use a map function on a series and um, map that value, and it's going to um, basically t look, you know, find the key in the dictionary and give us back that value. So here we can see um, we've get, we're getting regions back um, from state values, and we can very easily define a new column in the data frame um, using that mapping. Um, Next thing we'll talk about is working with missing values. Um, so here we've created um, a column called weeks since last order, and um, some of those values are null, we can see there. Um, so pandas has a fill NA method on series, and we could, um, we could put in a, uh, a string value there if we wanted to and just say, if it's null, we're gonna say never. Um, we can also calculate a value that we wanna put in there um, 
and in a lot of contexts, this might make sense. We're going to um, take the max of weeks since last order that are in that column and fill all the null values um, with that with that maximum value. Um, the next topic is uh, merging data frames. So here we have a new table introduced. Um, it's called IDDF, um, and you can see it just has an account ID um, and account name. And Pandas has a merge method that we can use to bring together the IDDF table with our um, DF table. So um, you can see this uh, pd.merge statement Basically, we enter the two data frames that we're merging as the first two arguments. And I have um, sliced the first data frame. A lot of times when you're doing a merge, you may have a really large data frame, but you don't want all those columns in um, your merged result. So you can, you can slice it um, right here in, um, in the statement. And so I've just selected out the account name and the city columns, um, and then you can define which columns you want to join on. So um, if it, the name is the same in both columns, you can just use um, on. But if they're different, you can use left on and right on. So you can see here we're saying uh, for uh, DF, we're joining left on account name. And then for uh, ID DF, we're joining right on name. And you can see now we've got our account ID um, lined up with um, the city or whatever other um, data from uh, DF that we'd want to combine with our account ID. But one thing to note here is um, you might wonder, well, how is this match working? You know, what, what, how, what kind of um, method is being used here? So if you don't specify, it's going to do an inner join. So you can see when you look at the length of this, it's only 441 rows, whereas our data frame is um, just over a thousand rows. So in a lot of cases, that's not what we want. We want to um, keep all the original values um, and supplement. Uh, so with that, we can specify a, a how um, parameter on our merge uh, method. So what I've done here is um, the same merge, but now uh, I've added how equals left. So this is going to do a left join, and we're going to keep all of our values um, in our data frame. And we can see that um, now we actually have almost 1,100 values. Um, and you might say, well, why? You know, why do we have? We only had uh, 1,015, and now we have 1,098. <laughs> What that indicates is that there must have been duplicate values in um, our um, ID DF. So when you're merging, you know, ideally we'd like to merge on uh, a unique ID in both um, in both data frames, but a lot of times um, that's not possible, and we're trying to do some kind of um, messy entity resolution. So um, with this, we can look at the, where it's duplicated, um, and we can break things down. Um, further from there. Um, and so we, one thing we might want to do is look at all the values where we weren't able to match up. We weren't able to assign um, an account ID. Um, and so what we can do is slice our data frame where that account ID is null. And so you can see here's a list of account names that we weren't able to match an account ID from um, our other table. Uh, and then we can again uh, use a similar tactic like we did earlier of um, identifying the matched and the not matched and splitting those into two separate data frames. Um, and then we might uh, kick out the not matched uh, to a CSV file, and we might have to work on that part manually. Um, so, and that is another strategy. Um, frequently, you can uh, do some work outside of Python, um, some manual work, or maybe you have some resources that can help you there. And then you can bring it back in to um, to Python and, and rejoin um, that data. Um, the last topic we're going to talk about is uh, grouping by values and uh, dealing with duplicates. So we've got a new um, data frame that we're dealing he with here called uh, order DF. Um, and this is very simple. We just have an account name, an order amount, uh, an order date, um, and a product. Um, so 
we want to think about um, you know, what's duplicated in this data frame, um, Pandas has a duplicated uh, method on series. So um, we take uh, the account name column and look at um, what's duplicated there and we get another Boolean mask um, and we can take value counts off of that and we can see that um, we have uh, 1,650 values um, that are duplicated. Now one thing to know about um, this duplicated method is by default it's going to um, mark the first in a, in a set of duplicates as not duplicated and then the rest um, as duplicated as, as true. Um, and that is, uh, the, there's a, um, an argument called keep um, which is defaulted to first. You can also set it to last so it will do the opposite or you can set it to false as I've done um, in the next statement. And when you say uh, dot duplicated keep equals false, what that's gonna do is flag anything that's part of a duplicate group as true. Um, so that's often um, a helpful tool if you wanna use our strategy again of, of splitting a data frame into separate parts. We could split it into the part that has duplicates and the part that doesn't have duplicates and that might be helpful um, in working through our cleansing uh, problem. Um, we, we can also use a duplicated method on a data frame. We've been looking at it um, on a series, but we can also use it on a data frame and what it's gonna do there by default is look for every single, um, every single column in that row um, being part of a duplicate group. But we can define a subset of uh, values that we wanna look at as far as duplication. So here I've defined the subset of account name uh, and product. So here we're only going to get those rows where both the account name and the product um, are part of a duplicate group. And you can see there that um, the number of, um, of duplicates identified that way is, is lower, which um, makes sense. Um, couple, so that's the, the duplicated function. Um, Another really um, useful method when we're dealing with duplicates is group by. Uh, so what group by gives us is um, a group by object um, based on a, a column that we provide a column or you can pass uh, multiple columns in a list and group by multiple columns. Um, and with that there are methods off of the group by object that are really powerful. So in this first example we've grouped by account name um, and then we've used the filter method um, and we can filter on uh, attributes of the, um, of each group. So um, I've used an anonymous function here and we're saying um, uh, filter where the length of the data frame is equal to exactly two. So you can see here these are um, the only uh, results we're gonna get back in this data frame are um, where there is an account name with two orders on it, essentially. Um, another really useful function um, for group by is um, ag. So that allows us to do aggregation. Uh, and we can pass into the um, ag method, we can pass a dictionary that has a column name and then the function that we want to use to aggregate. So here we're saying we want to aggregate order amount based on sum. So this is going to um, group by uh, account and then um, we get the total amounts there. Um, and then um, finally there is, uh, we can also have an apply function against, um, uh, against a, a group by um, object. So um, with that, we basically get a data frame um, for our duplicate group, and then we can complete various operations against it. So I define a dedupe orders function here, um, and it sums up all the orders in the group. Um, it counts the sales. It uh, then identifies um, the uh, most recent um, purchase date um, and takes the product that aligns to that row and then it's only gonna give us back values that have at least one um, 
uh, product B value in it. Um, so that is uh, the end of the talk here, and I think we're out of time. Thanks, everyone, for uh, joining.